Intimately related to impulse is momentum, just as kinetic energy is intimately related to work. Momentum can be thought of as the quantity of motion of an object or of a set of objects. It's sort of an accumulation of motion over mass. Here's how it's defined. Momentum of something is its mass times its velocity. Momentum is a vector. This is a product of a vector with a scalar. The mass is a scalar. Momentum vector will be in the same direction as a velocity vector because mass is always positive. Units for momentum are mass times velocity, so that would be kilogram meters per second. Even though momentum is a very important quantity in physics, one of the most important quantities, perhaps second only to energy, we don't have any specific name for the unit for momentum. It's just kilogram meters per second. So let's pause for a moment and think about what momentum conceptually means. There's several things that can happen when an object hits a barrier. It can go through it, it can stop dead, it can bounce back. Let's consider the ones that stop and bounce back. Which one's momentum changes the most? Well, here's how I'd like to analyze that. So here we'll start with an object coming toward the wall. It'll bounce back, coming back away from the wall. Let's say that this one bounces back perfectly elastically. It bounces back with the reverse momentum that it came in. The change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Minus the initial momentum is just the same thing in this case as the final momentum. So the change in momentum is twice the final momentum. On the other hand, let's look at the object that stops when it hits the barrier. It'll have the same initial momentum coming in, but its final momentum is zero. So final minus initial, its momentum change, is just minus the initial momentum. So the object that bounced back had doubled the momentum change of the object that stopped dead. This is in contrast to looking at the kinetic energy. The object that bounced back didn't change its kinetic energy at all, but the object that stopped dead lost all of its kinetic energy. So this is one of the key differences between momentum and kinetic energy. They both depend on the mass, they both depend on the velocity. Momentum depends directly on velocity. Kinetic energy depends on the square of the speed. So where there's a clear conceptual distinction between speed and velocity, we can understand a lot of the distinction between kinetic energy and momentum. We can also look at the momentum of a collection of objects just as we can look at the energy of a collection of objects, or at the mass of a collection of objects. Momentum is a property of an object. It's a property of a particle. When particles make up larger objects, the momentum is just the sum of the momenta of all the particles that make it up. Just like the energy is the sum of the energies of all the particles that make it up, just like the mass is the sum of all the masses that make it up. So here, the total momentum of a set of objects is just the summation of the individual momenta which is their individual masses times their individual velocities. The mass of particle one times its velocity plus the mass of particle two times its velocity and so on until you're out of particles. Momentum is a vector, so these different quantities add together as vectors. It's quite possible to have a whole collection of objects, all of which might have appreciable momenta of their own, adding up to a total momentum of zero. That means basically that where one is moving right, the other one is moving left, and on the net, the whole group isn't going anywhere. We'll eventually learn that this means that the center of mass has a velocity of zero.